holy cow, that last video got a ton of responses. Uh, thank you guys for watching it, for commenting. Steve and I both really appreciate your um, supportive comments that keep going, that AI is not going to take you over, at least in the short term, and that we have value to add because you don't always know the questions to ask, and AI may be able to tell you how but not why. So that was very encouraging, and we are keeping going. In fact, uh, we just announced an update to our Fonica Pro color grading tutorial that now includes a lesson on the Fonica Pro 11 feature, the magnetic mask feature, and how you can use that specifically for color grading. If you already own that tutorial, it's a totally free upgrade. If you don't, you might want to check it out because it's a great way to really learn a specific approach to color grading that I think will be helpful for you too. Now, a couple things I want to talk about today. First of all, I want to give you a couple resources for learning more about AI as it relates to editing or just in general because this thing is happening and I think we should all get educated. Uh, you know, one is just try the tools out. ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, uh, DeepSeek that just came out last week, which is a totally free model, open source, so you can check out. But here's a couple of resources for you. There's a guy named Ethan Mollock. He is a professor at Wharton. Uh, which uh, where I went years ago, and he has a substack called One Useful Thing, and it's also an email newsletter, and I think he does a really good job of introducing AI to the layperson, which I very much consider myself in that category. So I think he's great. Ethan Mollock, check him out, link below. And the other one, a little more technical, but there's a YouTube channel called Three Blue, One Brown. Uh, Grant Sanderson is the person behind it, and it is fantastic. Very deep, can be a lot of math, but also explains things so well. It's an absolutely excellent channel. In fact, there's a series on there, I think it's a seven part series, uh, on how neural networks work. And it breaks it down into short chapters. And I'm almost finished the all seven, and I think it's a great uh, introduction. It helps you understand what these neural networks are, what these large language models are, transformers, backwards propagation, gradient descent, all that stuff. It really gives you a sense of how this stuff works and takes some of the mystery out of it. So check those things out. Now, last video, I showed you an example where AI really did a terrible job of helping you with Final Cut Pro, and that was the Gemini demo, demo because it basically doesn't have the right training, training data for that. Now, today I'm going to show you an example of something that can be, I think, very useful. I'm going to show you how you can build a custom GPT that is based on good data, good Final Cut Pro information that will quickly and easily provide you answers to your questions about Final Cut Pro. Let's dive in. All right, so to create this custom GPT that will help you with Final Cut Pro, you're gonna need two things. First is a subscription to ChatGPT. Now, you can use ChatGPT for free, but the subscription does two things. It gives you access to the newest models, and the other thing is it allows you to actually create a custom GPT, which you can't without a subscription. You can use the lowest tier, which is $20 a month, which is what I do here. I don't recommend you pay $20 a month just for what I'm going to show you here because for that amount of money, that's $240 a year, you could buy all our tutorials and all our plugins and get a lot more value if all you want to do is really learn how to use Final Cut Pro. However, if you are using ChatGPT for other things, which I highly recommend, this is a great thing. So that's the first thing, the subscription. The second thing is a copy of the Final Cut Pro user guide. And I'm going to show you two ways you can get that. One is directly in Final Cut Pro under the help menu. You can choose Final Cut Pro help, which will launch the tips app. And here we have the Final Cut Pro user guide. And all you need to do is download it from here. I'm also going to show you that you can get it without being inside Final Cut Pro just by going to uh, Apple's website to the Final Cut Pro page. And then if you click on resources, you will see a list of resources, including, if we scroll down here, all our Ripple training uh, resources right here, uh, but also documentation. So if I click that, we've got the Final Cut Pro user guide. And if I click that, it will bring it up and you can download it from here as well. Download this guide. 
Okay, the reason I'm showing you this second option is that this guide is publicly available. You don't have to buy Final Cut Pro to get access to it. It's a publicly available document. Okay, once you've got those two things, this is how easy this is to do. Now, first of all, I'm not using the ChatGPT app. I highly recommend you have the app and use it if you're using ChatGPT, but for this particular process we're gonna go through, you have to use the website version. So you can see I'm on chatgpt.com. I'm signed into my account. And at the top left here, I'm gonna click on Explore GPTs. Then at the top right, I'm gonna click Create. Then over here, we've got options to either create or configure. Create means you can have an interactive session with ChatGPT to have it help you figure out what you wanna make. In this case, I'm just gonna go straight to configure, which allows you just to enter the data without being interactive in the process. So let's name it, and I'm gonna call this My Final Cut Pro Helper. And description is uh, a helper for Final Cut Pro. Now, instructions. This is uh, the key part here, and I'm gonna copy paste some uh, instructions that I have created in here so you don't have to watch me type it in here and I'll explain to you what they mean. And we'll go through it here. This, chat G this GPT acts as a Fonica Pro instructor. It is professional, empathetic, knowledgeable, and patient in its responses. The GPT has full knowledge of Final Cut Pro user manual that I've uploaded and is familiar with the details, features, and support resources provided on Apple's website, including the Final Cut Pro specifications and support pages. Now, I don't know if that actually works, if it's actually able to go to Apple's website and check out the resources and things like that, but I put it in there just in case it's able to. Uh, it is also familiar with the tutorials and training available at RippleTraining.com and can refer users to specific tutorials on that website whenever appropriate. Based on the question, the GPT provides a direct link to specific video or videos on YouTube.com slash RippleGuys. Again, I don't know if this part actually works. I haven't seen it actually work, but I thought it was worth putting in there. The rest of this is for pointing people to specific tutorials that we have on our website. You don't need to include this text. I did because I'm trying to build something that would be helpful to people that would guide us, guide them to our resources for more information. So this is totally optional here, but I'll show you what I did. For example, for questions about media management, refers users to media management in Final Cut Pro, blah, blah, blah. Questions about color correction, refers you to our color grading tutorial, sound design, audio, multicam editing, etc. Okay, so this is kind of the key part that helps it understand what to do. And you're welcome to use the create button instead and have a back and forth to create uh, your description basically here. Now, the next part, upload files. Key part here, key part number two. So click upload files, desktop. There's our Final Cut Pro user guide, publicly available, sending it up there. I will also turn, keep this web search capabilities turned on. I don't really think we need a uh, canvas or DALI image generation for this particular one, so I won't do those. I'll let this finish the upload, and then we're set. So let's test it out. Okay, I went ahead in advance and created 10 questions related to different aspects of Final Cut Pro throughout the process of using the app from importing and organizing, editing, working with audio, color correction, exporting kind of across the board. I haven't seen the results of these yet. I've created them, but I have not punched them into this. So we're gonna do this together live and see how it goes. I also created them in advance so you don't have to watch me type them. I'm just gonna copy paste them in. So the first one is related to importing. And under ask anything here, I'll type this. When importing my media, should I copy to the library or leave in place? Let's see what it says. And I also might cut out some of the time it takes to look this up. The first one, I'm gonna let it do in real time so you can see exactly what's happening. But going forward, I'll probably condense it just so you don't have to watch it, think and type it out. When importing media into Final Cut Pro, and by the way, it's hard to scroll in, but you can just kind of scroll up and stop it from scrolling. Uh, you have two main options, copy to library, duplicates the media files and stores in the library. Yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, all media self-contained library ensures media accessible, takes more storage space as it duplicates files. 
Not really true because if you're importing off a card, you're not taking more storage space. Uh, it might slow down. This option creates symbolic links. True. Save storage space. Yes. Faster input process and no files. That's very true. Requires careful file management. True. Backing up projects will not include the media unless consolidated later. Okay, that's all true. And that's actually a pretty decent, reasonable answer. For more information on media management, and then it sends you to our media management tutorial. So that's our <clears throat> that's my little marketing piece of this. Obviously, you don't need to include that. Let's try another one related to organizing. How do I rate clips? Let's see what it says here. To rate clips, select the clip or range of a clip. Very good, that includes range of a clip. Uh, it in the browser, great. Uh, mark is favorite, gives you the keyboard shortcut, shows you the green line, mark was rejected. Remove ratings, it even tells you how to remove ratings and gives you the keyboard shortcut for doing so. And even tells you how to filter on top of it. So it didn't even ask about that, but it offers the filtering. That's fantastic, really good job. Um, let's go to editing. Let's say, how do I trim a clip? To trim a clip in Final Cut Pro, you can use several methods depending on your editing needs. Drag the edit points, true, keyboard shortcuts, and they're exactly accurate. Remember in the last video when we used Gemini and it was looking at the screen, it could not, it did not give the right answer for trimming clips. It uses just bracket instead of option bracket. Use the trim tool, blade tool for cutting clips, precision trimming using time code, all right. And you know, it, it makes sense because it's based on the Final Cut Pro user manual. So it kind of makes sense here. Um, here, let me try one a little bit trickier. How can I change the start and end of a clip without changing its duration? So basically I want to know how to slip a clip, but let's say I don't know uh, how to ask that question correctly. I just know that I don't want to change its length, but I want to change its in and out points. You can use the slip edit technique. Okay. It absolutely knows that that's what I wanted to do. Use the slip tool, correct keyboard shortcut. Uh, option left arrow to slip one frame earlier. Option right arrow. I don't even know if that's correct. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, T with a trim tool. Drag inside the clip. That's exactly right. So it totally nailed it. Totally nailed it. Let's do an audio question. How can I reduce the background noise in my clip? Now, background noise could be video or audio. Not really clear. Let's see if it understands what I meant by that. Uh, using built-in noise removal feature. Click the audio button, inspector, enable noise removal. See, what I, I really wanted voice isolation. Ah, but it gave me voice isolation. Great. Okay. Uh, it did not understand that at all with Gemini when it was looking at the screen, but this exactly understood and gave several different options for dealing with this. Very good. And then it refers you to our sound editing tutorial in there. Very, very good. Here, I want to know, let's a little bit about LUTs. Now this really tripped up Gemini in the, in the last video. How do I turn off the LUT automatically applied to a clip? And this comes up a lot where people want to be able to turn that thing off. Uh, to turn it off automatically, follow these steps, select the clip in the browser, open the info inspector, and will it tell me to change the info, yes, it changed the metadata view to general extended settings. Perfect. That's exactly right. Very, very good. Um, how about this? Can I remove the background from a clip? And I'm hoping it's going to tell me about magnetic mask here. I'm just asking in a very generic kind of way. So it's suggesting the scene removal mask or the green screen keyer, which really isn't correct. A really magnetic mass is going to be the right way to do this. So that's a place that didn't really get the answer quite right there. How do I change the speed of a clip? Ah, it did mention magnetic mass. I didn't scroll down far enough. It did mention it. So at least it did mention it there. That's great. Um, change the speed of the clip. So retiming it, custom speed adjustments. I want to see if it mentions variable speed, speed ramping, and I want to see if it mentions blade speed as well. I do not, yeah, blade speed. Very, very good. Okay, 
Finally, last question I'll ask it here is related to media management. How can I reduce the size of my library? Question that's asked all the time that my library is getting too big. What do I do? So I'm interested in seeing how it handles, you know, deleting generated files, deleting generated media. Fantastic. So it really handled that quite well. Consolidate media to external storage. Sure, that's an option. Delete unused render files. Um, of course, what it's not telling you here is how to delete that cache because you need to first move it out of the library to delete it. But it covers most of it. So pretty, pretty darn good. So I was pretty impressed. I mean, that chat GPT, custom GPT did a great job. And it makes sense because it's only based on the Fonica Pro manual, but it was able to pick out the relevant parts, put them together in a way that really made sense, was presented well, added additional information. I, I think it did a great job and could be a great complement to, uh, frankly, to our training tutorials to put those two things together. You can do a tutorial and really learn a structure of how to approach your editing. And then when you get stuck, rather than searching through YouTube or searching through our tutorials or searching through the manual, you can just ask your custom GPT and it's going to give you that direct answer. And you can be much more confident in the veracity of that answer because it's based on the Fonica Pro Manual. So let us know what you think, as always, in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time. Mm -hmm.